So, dear colleagues, it's a great pleasure to be here. Thank you for the invitation. And uh, I have all the conflicts of interest that you can dream of when I say that uh, Ingrid Partnership for Change is doing an excellent job. So, what will be the topic for my presentation? Well, it will, of course, touch upon what are the impactful partnerships that we should be looking for. I will be dealing with health and the inequities in health. And I dare say that in very few arenas, you see this need requirement for collective action, as you see in health. So, this morning, those of you who have a command of the Norwegian language, uh, you might have seen in the uh, newspaper this morning that uh, I wrote a small piece about what is my topic for this small lecture. So things, is, things are not working here. There we are. So uh, what I pointed out in Doxavisen today is simply what is now such a challenge worldwide, and that is the growing, I dare say, growing inequities in health. And uh, I think it's safe to say that some of these inequities have simply been forgotten and overshadowed by discussions about the economic inequities not least in the wake of Piketty's very, very interesting treatise on the inequalities in the economic sphere. So, how come that uh, I, I have developed an interest in this uh, issue? First of all, I'm a physician myself, and as you might know, physicians, they have an imperative to act if they find that uh, health is challenged and if they find that something can be done about it. And uh, over the last three years, I've had the uh, privilege of heading a global commission, and uh, we published our report last year in The Lancet, and it has everything to do with inequities in health. So our conclusion is, of course, that there has been a tremendous advance in the field of global health over the last 10, 15 years or so, but there are inequities, inequalities that persist, and in fact, some in inequities are growing still. And uh, one of the most important messages that uh, can be derived from the analysis that we did is that so much is dependent on what happens outside of the health sector when it comes to health. And many decisions taken outside of the health sector severely and negatively impact health. This calls for partnerships to rectify the current situation. So I'm going to show you a few examples, all of which are from the last week or so, just to emphasize what we're talking about. Just a few days ago, a new Lancet report came out. I had nothing to do with this, but you should really make it an essential read. It has to do with global surgery. It sounds like an esoteric issue, but the fact is that the figures are overwhelming and depressing. What you will see here is that five billion of the world's population have no access to affordable and simple surgical interventions. For example, if there is a hernia, if there is a fracture, or other minor diseases and conditions that we take for granted in our own country that will be treated efficiently by our health system. Two-thirds of the world's population don't have access to affordable and simple surgical interventions. Just uh, two days ago, another very interesting report came up. Save the Children report ranks Norway as best country for mothers, and we should be pleased, of course, but if you look into the figures, you will be shocked because the inequities are enormous. In the top 10 countries, of which Norway is one, 
just one mother out of 10, 290 will lose a child to infant death. In the bottom 10 of the listed countries, the rate stands at one in eight. I think these figures are chilling and something have, has to be done about it. And uh, interestingly, if you look further into this report, you will see that much of the challenge depends on malnutrition. And I think this is one of the greatest challenges that we see in the health arena today, and I will come back to that later. And I know it will also be discussed later on. Another report that came out, uh, well, now we are really going into uh, contemporary literature. This came out yesterday. Uh, WHO concluded that three out of four Norwegian men will become obese. Three out of four. We pride ourselves now in this country to be lean and, uh, I wouldn't say lean and mean, but at least we are lean. But uh, according to WHO, this will change dramatically. And I was just in Chile. And in Chile, there is this enormous challenge of children growing obese and developing diabetes. It has to do with marketing of healthy food, but also, in addition, about a genetic predisposition for obesity and diabetes. So what has this to do with partnership? It has everything to do with partnership, because if we look into the complexity of these issues, you will find that we need so many disciplines, not only to get to the root causes of the diseases that we're talking about and the inequities, but also to try to understand what should we do about it. So we are talking about now in the academic sector about the partnership between disciplines. We need a multidisciplinary approach to understand these challenges and to come up with recommendations. For instance, when it comes to nutrition, look at the list of factors that we have to take into account to understand what is going on. We need expertise in political science, agriculture, of course, in financial instruments for speculation, how to control these, uh, spec uh, these financial instruments. We need also to know how is marketing s the marketing strategies being fleshed out by the companies. There are so many initiatives that have been taken now to bridge these disciplines. And one of the initiatives that I learned about just a few days ago is this one, Sun, which uh, really takes into account the need to look at the challenges from many different angles. The Sun approach includes organizations, individuals to, take, to scale up nutrition, and also many, many different kinds of expertise that we see are needed to really grapple with the challenges ahead. And yesterday, the Business for Peace uh, Prize was awarded to one of the persons involved in this, uh, uh, Paul Pullman of the Unilever company. So the com several companies are also engaged in this initiative. I'm not talking about initiatives that will be presented after my, with my short lecture. Uh, there will be no time for this, but of course, there are many very interesting uh, initiatives represented in this room as well. So what are the partnership partnerships do we need in order to attack these particular inequities? We need partnership between universities. The idea is very simple, and that is that the, the complexity of these issues is such that not even a large university can handle all the challenges involved and muster all the expertise that is needed. So what we're doing now at the University of Oslo is to collaborate with universities all over the world in order to look at these challenges from different angles. We just um, launched a MOOC. Everybody knows what a MOOC is, I hope. And uh, more than 7,000 students worldwide are now coupled to this particular MOOC. And several universities are involved, Stanford, but also Malawi, University of, of Malawi, and uh, also a uh, Chinese university. This is the partnership we need in order to grapple with these challenges. And we need partnership between generations. When we established our Commission on Global Governance for Health, we understood that we needed to have the students' voice as well. So we had a shadow commission, a youth commission. So what are the partnership do we need? And we see this need every day from the vantage point of my own university. We need to have partnership with new and emerging technologies. And one thing that I think we should develop 
much more intensively is to see how we can use mobile phone technologies, renewable energy technologies, to really provide the information that is needed in rural and poor parts of the world. This is a health information systems program that was developed at the University of Oslo and that now provides information and assistance to pregnant women, even in the poorest parts of Africa. And the WHO has approved of this uh, program and it has a potential to reach out for 1.3 billion people in the years to come. This is one extremely big important partnership. Finally, since health is so interwoven with what happens in other sectors outside of the health system, is so interwoven with global governance, we need to have a partnership with the political institutions. And I'm so proud to say that the group of seven countries that met in Oslo in 2007, they came up with a resolution that I think is so promising because they said quite clearly that we understand that health is such a complex issue and involves global governance systems to such an extent that we have to see health as a major outcome of foreign policy. This is also the partnership we need. So to sum up, we need an increased focus on the need to develop integrated health services and health systems. The uh, global surgery report is very clear on this. We need to provide an evidence base, recommendations. We need to see health as a cross-sector concern. We need to uh, come up with innovative solutions to improve global governance for health. And also, we need to ensure that the Sustainable Development Goals embed these issues in the recommendations. And uh, I must say on my own behalf that the Sustainable Development Goals, as they now stand, do not really stand up to the challenges that we just discussed. The last slide shows what we're talking about in a very, very clear and concise manner. Yes, we need targeted approaches like vaccine programs. But yes, we need to understand that these targeted approaches are extremely vulnerable and fragile. This is an extreme example, of course, but when we presented our report last year, this happened. The polio that was almost eradicated in Syria blossomed up again, simply because there was not any longer an integrated health system that could take care of uh, the children. Thank you for your attention.